With the release of Ableton Live 12.1 came three new amazing MIDI tools. In this video today, I'm gonna to unpack what those three MIDI tools are, what they do and how they can be applied musically to a song. Let's jump into it and get started. To access the new MIDI tool, simply double click on the clip you would like to apply the tools to, go to the transformation tab, and then select one of these new three amazing tools. So the first one is Glissando, we've got LFO, and we've got Chop. Let's first look at Glissando. So this is one of my favorite MPE effects. You used to have to manually go in and do this, but now it's right here. We can simply turn it on like this. As long as we've got auto, it will automatically apply. We can adjust the start point and end point. And essentially what it does is it bends the notes down to the next notes in the chord. So let, let me show you this. Let me just solo up the chords here. Oh, such a good sound. Let's do it dramatic from the start. Um, it won't sound as good as that. It's got a really good tension and release to it. It's really fun. So you've got obviously the start point here, which can be adjusted on this dial. You also have the curvature here, which you can either make it um, kind of convex or um, concave, or you can just have no curvature, have it straight and that sound like this. have to be careful with this if you have notes going over the top of it or underneath it like a bass if you have it detuning for too long it can start to sound like well it's out of tune okay next one is lfo now we're going to jump over to the bass for this and i'm going to jump to the transformation tools i've selected lfo from the list and it is mpe as well for those of you that don't know what mpe is it's midi polyphonic expression it basically means we can sign modulation like lfos and stuff to individual notes within the piano roll, so not just having it applied to all the notes. So for example, if we had a chord with seven notes, we could just choose one of them to have some modulation parameters. So I'm gonna select this bass note here, and I'm just going to tap one of these dials. As long as I've got auto one, it will automatically apply. Now, you can also press transform, and that will apply it here. Now we have a few things here. We have shape, so we can basically uh, adjust the, the wave shape, it kind of folds in and we have a bunch of different waves here. So depending on what waveform you use, the shape adjusts it differently. We have an envelope, so you have attack and decay. So that's quite good for fading in. So we can do like a little bit of a fade in on the LFA. You see here, the first curvature of the wave isn't as steep. This is really nice. And then we've got a decay as well, which is, if I put that up, it's essentially like the opposite. It's like smoothing out the end of it. Okay, so let's just put a little bit of envelope on the start. And we have the amount, so that is either minus or plus. So this is just how much or how big the wave is essentially. So how much of the modulation is going to be affecting that one note. Let's put that back to where it was at the start. And we can also adjust the start point here. So underneath the blue here, we've got it kind of 64. If you double click, it takes it back to original parameter, but we can shift it right up. So you can see there it's pretty much at the top. I'm not going to be doing anything. Same here, we can do it right down the bottom, have it just wiggle a little bit. Let's have it in the middle here. So then we've got rate here. So rate is basically how much of an oscillation is going to be within the LFO. So as a default, it's to one quarter note. Now we can adjust the start point here. So it can start a little bit after you've done the note. This can work in conjunction with the envelope up here as well. Okay, so now what we can do also is we can assign it to different things. So we can assign it to pitch bend. With pitch bend, it automatically assigns itself to pitch. With the other ones, so the slide and pressure, we have to go into the individual synthesizer and map a slide or pressure parameter to one of the parameters in the synth. So most of the stock instruments in Ableton are MPE capable now, especially Drift and Mouth, they work really well with this. Also Wavetable and Analog have MPE as well. Depending on what preset you choose will depend what the slide and the pressure dial does. So let's just have a listen to the pitch bend, see what that does. <laughs> there, let's, let's do the amount up. Well, so you can see that the amount has changed now, so it's to semitones. That's gonna sound horrific. <laughs> yeah, not usable at all. Okay, so let's, let's bring that amount back. Now let's go into, let's go to pressure and let's go into the synthesizer here. And I'm gonna to go to the frequency modulation section here in the, the filter, and I'm just gonna select this thing here where it says mod to pressure. So now every time there's a pressure LFO, it's going to adjust this parameter here. Let's go back into our clip, signed it to pressure. 
Okay, so let's let's put the amount up so we can hear it. Whoa, really nice. So it's just like pulling the filter backwards and forwards. Let's hear that in the track. Nice, really cool. Really nice little fluctuation there. Okay, let's look at the next one, Chop. So I'm gonna double click on this clip here and jump in, have a little look at it. Again, it's in the transformation tools. So you go down, second one down, Chop. What it essentially do, it will get a MIDI note and it will chop it up. If I press transform, see here it's done it to all the MIDI notes, which I do not want to do. So I'm just gonna, um, so I'm just gonna find a note. So I want this one here. I'm just going to extend it out to the length of the whole bar because I want hi hats to go across, and then I'm just going to go transform. So now it's cut it up into fourth. Now, if you have a variation here, see it pulls it off the grid. If you double click to put the variation back to zero, I think it's like that as default. If I press play on this clip, you'll be able to hear it. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, but what we can do is we can go in and we can turn steps off. Or we can stretch. So you see there, it's pushed all the other ones slightly off. It stretched it by two. You can go in and adjust that that stretch point here. So when it goes blue, it means it's stretching a note. And then you can say by how much. You could go in here and adjust them. Can get a little bit messy with the chops in terms of the quantization of the notes. So it is fun to experiment with that, but just be aware of that. Okay. Now what we can do is we can increase it. So if I put it up to say 16, so make it 16th notes. Go turn, turn these ones on. So now we should have. Okay, now if we put some gaps in. Cool, and then extend some of them. <laughs> no. Cool, so that sounds pretty fun. Now what we can do is we can do this to individual notes here, which is pretty good as well. So I can chop that up and get like a hi-hat trill. So now if I press transform, this obviously, it might be a bit too much. It's not too bad actually. Yeah, so it's too much like that. Maybe if I take it down to like, something like that. Cool, so it's really fun for getting some hi-hat chops and then if we add variation in there as well. ramp the velocity as well with this section done put some deviation to downwards cool we're getting some variations to our music there with the transformation tools so this song you're hearing now was generated with the midi generative tools which is another part of these midi tools that ableton live 12 has developed if you would like to see how I made this song from scratch with those tools, you can do so in this video here. See you in the next one.